Welcome to this crash course in the Italian wine region of Veneto. You're going to learn exactly what makes Veneto a unique wine producing region, what types of wines are out there, and where you should begin your journey in tasting these wines. I'm Tony Margiata, I'm a wine importer and author of Hidden Gems of Italy. My life's mission is to look for and support world class artisanal wines handcrafted in small batches from Italy, many of which have been overlooked and undervalued. My family's from a small village in the Molise, a region of Southern Italy, and I've been traveling to Italy over 20 years, immersing myself in Italian food, wine, and culture. So where is Veneto? Well, it's in the Northeast of the country. Uh, part of its border is on the Adriatic Sea, and it borders with neighboring regions, Friuli Venezia Giulia, Emilia Romagna, Lombardia and Alto Adige, and then a touch of, of the border actually uh, is shared with the country of Austria. So what makes Veneto unique? Well, the population of the people in Veneto can be traced back as far as 7,000 years ago. But in the early years, the Veneti people inhabited areas around Lake Garda, uh, also the city of Verona, and in the first century BC, Veneto was absorbed into the Roman Empire, but the region and its people maintained their unique identity and culture. It wasn't until the first centuries AD where several Germanic tribes invaded and forced the Veneti people to find a safe place to hide. So they went out to these marshy lands and lagoons, wet and muddy places that no one in their right mind would go to look for them. And so that's how they built the city on water. Uh, it, you know it better as the city of Venice, one of the most romantic cities in the world, not just because the city was built on water, but for its art, architecture, carnival, glass making, and even classical music history. But winemaking in Veneto has been going on for over 3,000 years. But it really wasn't until the Romans took over in the first century BC that winemaking really flourished there. Veneto is a massive, massive wine producing region today, and it produces a wide variety of wines from the sparkling wines like Prosecco to the world's most respected wines like Amarone. Today, the Veneto region is famous for a winemaking wine -make, wine technique called Apacimento. You can see the picture here on the right. This technique involves air drying harvested grapes before fermentation in order to increase richness and flavor. It also tends to increase complexity, alcohol, and sugar levels. This technique is essential to making the now world famous Amarone wine recognized as one of the world's best wines. Now, while the Veneti people get all the credit for Apacimento, it was actually the Romans that were drying grapes for winemaking much further back in time. The Veneti winemakers took an ancient Roman technique and turned it into a world-class wine for the modern era. The influence of ancient Rome still impacts our daily lives today, especially for us wine lovers. The rich flavors produced by Apacimento has gotten so popular today that other regions, regions in Italy are making their own Apacimento wines. So how should you think about Veneto wines? Of course, get to know their main native grape varietals that are cultivated locally in the region, and then start your journey on studying some of the appellations. So let's look at some of Veneto's native grapes. For the whites, we have Glera, and this is the white varietal used to make the, the, the famous Prosecco sparkling white wine. And then the first white varietal for dry whites that is extremely important that you should know from the region is called Garganega. And then there's Turbiana, which, which is shared with neighboring Lombardia. There's a, an appellation called Lugana DOC, which is a delicious white wine. It's a unique appellation that is shared between Lombardia and Veneto. And so that's Turbiana. And then for the reds, we have Corvina, Rondinella, Molinara, and then Raboso. Well, the first three are typically found in blends. So whether we're talking about the Bardolino appellation, or we're talking about the Valpolicella Appalachian, you'll see these three grapes blended together um, almost exclusively, Corvina, Rondinella, and Molinara. 
Corvina is always the dominant red varietal. And in fact, Corvina is the most important red varietal in the region. Today, even though historically the wine, uh, the varietal was blended with the others, you're seeing more and more mono varietals of, of Corvina popping up, you know, 100% single varietal Corvina wines. And that trend is, I, I believe, being pushed by the smaller artisanal wine producers in the region, which you should definitely uh, check out for all of these wines. I definitely would not put a check mark next to any of these varietals unless you've had an artisanal version uh, to really uh, taste the authenticity, the originality, the unique uh, flavors, textures, and aromas that really can only be found in lower yielding wines. So 50,000 bottles a year or less is a good range uh, to check out. And then finally, the last varietal I added on there for for those of you who want to explore further in Veneto, is the Rabozo uh, red varietal. And it's an interesting varietal because um, it's a very, very tough wine. So what they did was, is they, they create a dry still version of Rabozo, and then they do an air dried version of Rabozo, and they blend them together, which makes the Rabozo wine today. It's a, it's a very, very interesting wine. Okay, here's the Appalachians. Like I said before, Veneto, like Tuscany, like Piemonte, it's a massive wine producing region. And so therefore they have many, many Appalachians. Notice the DOCG, they have many DOCG wines. Some regions only have one, some don't even have any, like uh, Calabria, at least at the time of this recording. And then lots of DOCs from Veneto as well. But I would say the most important wine producing area in Veneto is the Valpolicella area near the city of Verona, which is down here in this area, if you can see my cursor. So which Appalachians should you try since there's so many? Well, to get started, I would definitely uh, pick up a Prosecco Superiore DOCG Conegliano Valdobbiadene. This is sort of a a big step up from regular Prosecco. So if you've ever had a regular Prosecco and you like it or you think it's just okay, definitely check this out. It's on a whole nother level. Then for the white wines, you definitely need to pick up a Suave DOC. Suave is made with the Garganega grape. Try to find 100% uh, mono varietal of this wine, 100% Garganega. So you can really test the, taste the essence of the grape. And then the last three are all coming from the Valpolicella uh, wine producing sub region. And so I wanna go over what are the differences between these three important wines. Uh, the Valpolicella DOC is typically made with three blended grapes, Corvina, Rondinella, and Molinara, like I mentioned previously. When they make this wine, they do not use a passimento, so no air drying, okay? This tends to be a lighter, medium body type of wine, very uh, yummy red cherries and super easy finishes when it's done right. I'm gonna skip over Ripasso for a second. Then we have the world famous Amarone della Valpolicella, which we all call just simply Amarone today, DOCG. That's made with Corvina and Rondinella. And they use a passimento to uh, make this wine. So it's made with 100% air dried grapes. The Ripasso is sort of the best of the two worlds, the Ripasso della Valpolicella DOC. They take the Valpolicella wine and pass it through the leftover air dried grapes that were used to make the Amarone. And this causes a second fer fermentation, and the resulting wine is richer than the Valpolicella, but less power than the Amarone, sort of in between these two worlds. So in just a few words, you know, the Ripasso is really a great value wine if you like the taste of Amarone. Uh, for me, uh, the Valpolicella DOC is sort of an everyday drinking wine, and it pairs well easily with lots of different foods. Ripasso della Valpolicella might be like my Friday night uh, or Saturday night special dinner at home. And then Amarone is for sort of really, really special occasions. So the first sparkling white wine you should try, if you've never had a Prosecco, pick up a Prosecco DOC. 
If you've already had Prosecco because it's, it's so famous, uh, definitely check out the Superiore Cornelliano Valdobbiadene DOCG. Sometimes you'll just see either Cornelliano or you'll see just Valdobbiadene on the label. I tend to prefer the Valdobbiadene. Um, definitely pick up a bottle of those. First white wine you should try, either Suave DOC or Suave Superiore DOCG. And the reason why I put them both is because I, I want you to look for a Suave DOC that's made with 100% Garganega. Okay, so if you can't find it with the, with the Suave DOC, uh, you might have a better shot at finding one with the Suave Superiore. First red wine you should try, go with the Valpolicella DOC in my opinion. Uh, go with that. If you've already had a Valpolicella, check out the Ripasso della Valpolicella. And that's it for Veneto to get started, okay? So make sure you subscribe to Gladiator Wine TV so you don't miss out on new videos about artisanal Italian wine and much more. And always remember, great wines are not made in great numbers.